All right, so welcome to our first video on applications of derivatives. Um, I'm going to try to go quick and not talk too much because some of the stuff we've already talked about. So our first lesson is about how do you know when something is increasing or decreasing? And then how does that yield local or relative extrema? So if I look at this graph right here and I call that F, and we asked on what intervals is the function shown increasing, decreasing, and constant, from here to here, my graph is decreasing because it goes down from left to right. So it is decreasing on the interval from one to three. And if you're thinking, wait a minute, you included the endpoints, you're right, I did. In calculus, when we talk about intervals of increase and decrease, we make closed intervals, okay? We'll talk about it later, but just know they are closed intervals. Then from one, two, three, we're decreasing. Then three to five, it looks like we are staying the same. So we have a constant interval from three to five and then from five to six seven we are increasing okay now if we talk about what's true about the derivative on those intervals i am going to just go in here and say well if something is decreasing the derivative would be negative if something is increasing, the derivative would be positive. And when something is constant, our derivative equals zero. I should put like equals there. Okay. At these corners right here, my derivative would not exist. All right. And that's totally fine. I can still close in the interval. All right. And then what would the true of what would be true of the derivative at the end points of these intervals? We just said that f prime would not exist because there are corners there. All right, now, stuff you need to know. If f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval in between a and b, if f prime is greater than zero, aka positive, then f increases on a to b. And when f prime is negative or less than zero, then f decreases on that interval. So, since intervals of increase and decrease are when f prime changes from positive to negative, the only thing that can happen between positives and negatives is zero and nothing, which weirdly aren't the same thing. Your derivative could equal zero in between intervals of increase and decrease, or your derivative could not exist, aka nothing, in between a positive and a negative. So, if we talk about guidelines for finding intervals on which it's increasing or decreasing, the first thing it says is we need to find critical points of f and use those to determine the intervals. You need to know that a critical point is where f prime either equals zero or does not exist. That's a vocab term. Critical point is when your derivative equals zero or doesn't exist. You use those critical points to create intervals, and then you determine the sign of f prime on each interval, and then decide based on that sign if your original function is increasing or decreasing. So when I come down here and it says find the intervals on which f of x is increasing or decreasing, I say, wait, f's increase or decrease distinction is based on the derivative. So f prime would be 3x squared minus 12. And if I want to know where there are sign changes, I want to find critical points by setting 3x squared minus 12 equal to 0 or finding out where it doesn't exist. Well, 3x squared minus 12 always exists, so I'm just going to ignore that and then say, all right, if I want to know when that equals 0, I can divide both sides by 3. I'd have x squared minus 4 equals 0 which is x plus 2, x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals negative 2 and 2. All right. Now, I really should have moved this over to the side, so I'm going to move it. I'm sorry if you've already written it down. Do, 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 do. Those become the end points of my intervals. So the domain of the original is all real numbers. It's a polynomial. So my original domain goes from negative infinity all the way to infinity. And then from negative infinity to negative 2, 
my function is doing something. Then from negative two to two, my function is doing something. And then from two to infinity, my function is doing something. When you have intervals of increase and decrease, they are closed. However, infinity can never have a closed bracket on it because infinity is an idea. It doesn't stop. It keeps going. Therefore, that's why that's a parenthesis. All right. Here's my intervals of increase and decrease. Which is which depends on the sign of f prime inside that interval. So I'm going to evaluate f prime of, let's say, negative 3 and see if it's positive or negative. Well, here's f prime. If I plug negative 3 into there, I've got 27 minus 12, which is positive. I don't care what it is. I just care that it's positive. So since f prime is positive on that interval, therefore f is increasing on that interval. Don't just write increase. Don't just write positive comma inc. You have to show me that you are using the derivative to talk about the original. So make sure you have f prime here and f there because this unit does a lot of flip-flopping back and forth. All right, from negative 2 to 2, let's pick a number in between negative 2 and 2. I know, let's pick 0. If I evaluate my derivative at 0, I get negative 12. So f prime at 0 is less than 0. Therefore, f is decreasing on that interval. And last but not least, if I find f prime at, let's say, 5, because that's between 2 and infinity, f prime at 5 is definitely positive. Therefore, f is increasing there. And there's your intervals of increase and decrease. Okay, I'm going to come down. Do number 2. So if I do number two, find the intervals on which g is increasing or decreasing. I know that I'm going to need g prime. And g prime is going to be two-thirds x squared minus nine to the negative one-third times the derivative of the inside. And if I want intervals of increase and decrease, they break up when the derivative equals zero or doesn't exist. Now, there is no distinct way that you have to write that derivative. However, I now need to use that derivative to solve an equation, and I'm not good at solving equations that look like that. So I am going to rewrite this for my own benefit as 4x over 3 times the cube root of x squared minus 9. And I want to know when that equals 0 or doesn't exist. Now remember, in a fraction, a fraction equals 0 when the top equals zero. A fraction will not exist when the bottom equals zero. So if I set the top equal to zero, I get x equals zero. If I set the bottom equal to zero, I'm going to get x equals plus or minus three because it's when the radicand equals zero. And now I need to think about my domain and breaking it up. So g of x is yada, yada, yada to the two-thirds. Two-thirds is a cube root. I can cube root positives. I can cube root negatives. I can cube root integers. I can cube root rational numbers. I can do it here or there. I can do it anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham, except actually I do like green eggs and ham because I can take all of these things. So our domain here goes from negative infinity all the way to infinity. And I need to pause at each of these x values. So first, I'm pausing at negative 3. Then next after negative 3 would be that 0. Then after the 0 would be the 3. And after the 3 would be infinity. Okay. Now I need to evaluate the derivative at each of those places. I'm just switching colors to make it obvious what I'm doing. So I'm going to find f prime... All right, and so here's the f prime that's going to be easiest for me to think about. I'm going to find f prime at, let's say, negative 5. And all I care about is positive negative. So f prime at negative 5 is going to be negative on the top. And let's see, if I plug negative 5 into here, that's going to be positive on the bottom. 
f prime at negative 5, a negative divided by a positive is a negative. So f is decreasing there. Then let's try negative 2. I would have a negative on top. I'd have a negative on the bottom if I plug negative 2 into this fraction. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So f is increasing there. And if you're thinking, well, Mrs. River, now that you knew it decreased, can't it just go decrease, increase, decrease, increase? No. There are plenty of functions that go decrease, decrease, increase, decrease. Okay, they do not have to alternate. Um, for example, this function decrease, decrease, but broken at zero. Okay, so do not just assume that intervals alternate because they do not. Um, all right, now what about f prime of positive 2? Well, let's see. f prime of positive 2 is going to be positive on top and negative on the bottom. So f decreases there. And f prime of a number between 3 and infinity, let's pick 5 is going to be a positive over a positive, which is positive. So f increases there. Okay. So everything I did on this page in a nutshell is if you want to figure out when f increases and decreases, you need to know the sign of f prime. When f prime is positive, f increases. When f prime is negative, f decreases. To find intervals, you set f prime equal to zero or find out when it doesn't exist, then you break up your domain based on the solutions to that equation. Okay, now in between those, I have local extreme values. I have a local max if f of x is less than or equal to f of c for all x in some open interval. What the heck does that mean? It just means if you have a maximum, Everything else near that maximum is lower than the maximum. That's all that means. And if f has a minimum, everything else is above the minimum. Okay? But here's the thing. That's a really silly way to say it. If you have a local max, that means you have a graph that increased and then decreased. It might increase and decrease in a smooth way. It might increase and decrease in a sharp way. Still going to be a local max. All right, so if I come back to this first part and I think about what happened here, from negative infinity to negative 2, f was increasing. Okay, so that means f was going up until negative 2. And then from negative 2 to 2, f was, let's make a dot here, from negative 2 to 2, f was going down. Sure looks like a maximum to me. So at negative 2, we're going to have a local max. Then f is decreasing from negative 2 to 2, then increasing from 2 to infinity. That looks like a local min. The other thing that I would need to do and think about there is make sure the function exists at negative 2 and 2, but that's a polynomial. It exists everywhere, so I'm good. Okay. Down here on the bottom one, I can do the same thing. We talked about this exists everywhere. So f decreased and then increased. So at x equals negative 3, we have a local min. Then f went from increase to decrease, so x equals 0 is going to be a local max. Then we went from decrease to increase, x equals 3 is a local min. Okay. All right. So if we look at a picture like this one, there are different types of extrema, okay? A local max is where everything is lower nearby, like a hill. A local min is like a valley, okay? 
On the AP exam, they do not consider endpoints to be local anythings. They will not ask you about the endpoints being local anythings. Okay. The AP will, however, ask you about what are called absolute max and min. This point right here is both a local max and an absolute max. It's a local max because it's higher than everything around it. And it's an absolute max because it's higher than everything. This thing right here is not a local min because the AP says it's not. It is, however, an absolute min because it is lower than every other y value in that picture. Now, I did not want this video to be a long one, so I am going to stop here, and then we will talk about local extrema in class together. So, I am all done with this video. I normally end videos with a stupid joke, and now I need to think about a joke because I didn't plan ahead. Um, and I don't know if I've used this before, but we're going to go with it because it's one of my favorites. What color is a belch? What color is a belch? It's purple. So, we are done with the burp-related humor. I hope everybody is having a good day and continues to do so. Toodaloo!